strengthening your remodeling business, lessons from economic adversity and technological progress. That's going to be our topic for today. And there's a corresponding article on our website. I'm going to put a link below this video uh, so you can reference that. One of the things we want to talk about is in this ever-evolving landscape of the remodeling industry, one of the things you're going to have to navigate is economic adversity and uncertainty. And at the same time, you're going to have to embrace technological progress, and that's going to create a challenge for you as a business owner. And so what we're going to do in this uh, conversation today is take a look at some insights that I gained from my conversation with Russ Glickman uh, on the Digital Remodeler podcast. And I'm also going to put a link uh, to that interview down below this video as well. Uh, he's a seasoned home remodeling professional, over 40 years of experience. And what he's done is he has specialized in accessible living spaces and kind of carved out a little sub-niche for himself uh, in that space. And so it's a good interview on really developing a lasting brand and how to just survive, you know, changing economies and, and circumstances, politically, economically, um, all of those types of things. And so what we want to do is, is just help guide you um, through these economic downturns, uh, how to leverage these, you know, technological advancements, and how to even take advantage of downturns to really use those as a springboard in your profitability and to fortify your own operations. And so the first thing that we want to get into is one of the ways you create economic resilience is through specialization. Think about it this way. A general practitioner in the medical field does not make near as much money as a specialist does. And a general practitioner in the medical field does not have near the waiting list that a specialist does. Uh, in fact, if I want to go see my family practitioner, um, normally I can call and be in within the next 24 to 48 hours. If I want to see one of my specialists, that could be a three to four month wait. Specialists have a higher demand on their time and therefore they can demand a higher price point because of their area of specialization. And this is one of the lessons that, that uh, really came out of this conversation with Russ Glickman. Uh, his specialization is one of the things that has carried him through economic downturns. Uh, because here's what happens in these economic downturns, and we've seen it right now. Interest rates are up in the 8 9% range. Money is not cheap. And so consumers are much more selective in their spending choices. And that means that you've got to really make it a priority to distinguish your business from the business of your competition. And so specializing in a niche such as accessible living spaces not only is going to set you apart, but it's also going to target a specific client base that has a very unique set of needs. And that's going to ensure steady demand in spite of what's going on in the economy. Now, furthermore, you want to track the return on investment of any of your marketing efforts. That's going to become paramount as well in difficult financial times because you have to know what's performing and what's giving a positive return on investment. Allocating resources to your highest yielding strategies is going to be crucial. Digital marketing with you know, the ability to measure outcomes is really going to be one of the more practical solutions for you. You know, referrals and, and uh, yard signs and things like that, a little harder to measure, uh, but you can measure your performance in digital marketing very easily. And you want to focus on those strategies that enhance your online presence. So this is going to be things like search engine optimization. And Search engine optimization is really kind of a broad term. There's a lot of components to it. There's traditional search optimization. There's local search optimization. There's map search optimization. There's voice search optimization. And now there is AI-assisted search optimization. So there's really five components to that SEO picture. 
You also have your content marketing, articles, blog posts, press releases, and then your social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, um, any of those social channels that you want to be utilizing as well. And you really want to use this ecosystem approach that we teach um, to where you're covering all of those bases. You want to be found in search, uh, you want to be found in the social environments, and you want to be seen as an authority and expert in your field, and that's where your blogging, your articles, your press releases are going to set you apart from your competition. You also are going to need to look at controlling costs, and this is another critical component uh, during these downturns in the economy. So part of that means streamlining your operations without sacrificing your quality and then adopting cost-effective marketing strategies. So you do have to look for places where you can trim the fat. But let's be honest about this. Marketing is an investment. It's not an expense. And I see way too many business owners who immediately go after their marketing budget. And you may be saying, well, that's easy for you to say, Carl. You're a marketer. Well, there's some truth to that. But the reality is, if you're not driving an inbound source of leads into your sales funnel constantly, at some point, that sales funnel is going to dry up and you're going to be in serious trouble. Marketing is one of those things you can't afford to step off of. Now, you can change the, the level to which you're marketing. You can change some of your strategies to which you're marketing. You can certainly look for ways to cut a little fat out of that, but you've got to keep marketing. And then, of course, managing your overhead meticulously, those are some of the things that are going to help safeguard your financial health. And it's important that you always know your numbers. I meet too many business owners who really don't know their numbers. You need to know what percentages you are spending on things like marketing, materials, labor, etc. You need to know what your total profitability looks like. Um, those numbers are going to be critical. And uh, if you don't know those numbers, then you're going to be guessing, and guessing's a quick road to disaster. And then we want to talk about, you know, technological adaptation to create greater efficiency in your business. So one of those pivotal areas of navigating economic downturns is learning to utilize technology to your advantage. Let the systems do some of the heavy lifting for you. Um, one of the things that, you know, Russ found during the COVID-19 pandemic was that things like remote meetings and virtual design sessions became super critical to keeping his business moving forward. Now, what he also found was after the, the COVID-19 pandemic was really done, those things really made sense. They were good cost-saving measures good efficiency measures. They allowed him and his team uh, to work smarter and not harder. So you definitely want to take advantage of things like that. So when you think about it, tools like Zoom have, have really transformed client interactions. You know, pre-COVID, almost all of my meetings were face-to-face. Post-COVID, I maybe have one face-to-face -face meeting every six months. Um, it's just the nature of business these days. Making consultations is now more flexible. It's more accessible. You can schedule that around people's time. You don't have wasted time out in the vehicle. You can be more productive. And so Zoom meetings are a great way to operate. Love them or hate them, they are an efficiency tool and they will save you money. Um, for a remodeling business, this means you have the opportunity to also expand your client base geographically and enhance the service convenience to those customers. Now, here's the, the big game changer that, you know, hit the scene here about, oh, maybe a year, year and a half ago, and that's artificial intelligence, AI. And AI is, is just changing the, the nature of business uh, rapidly. And so using AI, you have a lot of tools for efficiency, for innovation, for design, uh, especially in design, helping your, your prospective customers, your clients to visualize their projects uh, before you ever start those. You've got AI-assisted project management tools that strive for greater efficiency. 
Um, you can produce productivity using AI. You can use AI to create standard operating procedures, policies, uh, marketing content. You know, the, the realm is just endless of how you can be using AI to further your business. In fact, one of the things that we are doing here is we are really making AI the centerpiece of what we do for our clients. We are training AI specifically on each client um, to give a much better uh, end result for our clients, training them on data, training them on demographics, on customer profiles, all of those types of things. So these are just some of the things that uh, you want to be considering as well. And then, of course, you really want to be thinking about your brand. What does your brand signify? Uh, what do people think of when they hear your brand name? Is there a perception that comes along with that in your community? And a strong, recognizable brand is the cornerstone of your business, especially when you're in such a competitive industry like home remodeling. Um, one of the things that you find with Russ Glickman's journey is that it really underscores the significance of building a solid brand that stands for quality, reliability, specialization, and here's probably the other thing, stands the test of time. Um, that brand has now stood 40 years of time and has been time tested. And of course, achieving certifications, winning awards, getting positive press coverage, those are all strategies that contribute to getting a solid brand reputation. The more you can get that brand out there, the more you are going to be easily recognizable, the more you're going to create an emotional trigger with that brand. And so give a lot of thought to your brand strategy. It, it shouldn't be as, as simple as just, you know, creating a logo on the internet and coming up with a name. Put some values behind that. Put some mission behind that and then put some feet to those things. And of course, you know, the ability to be found in today's world and being present online is absolutely non-negotiable. So you need to have an updated user-friendly website. And when we talk about user-friendly, you gotta remember the average person is gonna look at your website here. It's gonna be on their mobile device not necessarily on their laptop or their desktop. What most people do is they do their initial searches on the phone, and then if they need to do some deeper research, that's when they pull out the laptop or the tablet or the desktop. So you want to be thinking about how does your website perform in all of those different environments. Uh, you need to have active social media profiles. People do business with those that they know, like, and trust, and in today's online world, the way they figure out if they know, like, and trust you is by what happens in your social media. And so engaging online content is going to be essential for developing that client engagement, that brand visibility, that brand loyalty. And so make sure you've got all of those digital assets in place and that they're active. It's not just build it and let it sit there. It's build it and keep it busy, keep it active. Even if you've got to hire a virtual assistant to keep those pages busy, keep them busy. And, and here's a little nugget of advice for you. So many remodelers that I meet fail to just post pictures of their work. Show off what you're doing. Show off the projects that you've done. Get those testimonials. Put that social proof out there. Stir the imagination of your consumer. If you don't do that, then it's just a price war and you better hope you're the cheapest. And that's the competition we want to get you out of. And then, of course, you want to empower others with just strategic advice. And so be somebody who becomes a mentor in the industry. So one of the things that sometimes happens is home remodelers get territorial. Well, don't get territorial. Become the wise guru in your industry and in your region. Become the, the respected Yoda, if you will, that people turn to. You see, advice coming from somebody who's seasoned, from somebody who's been in the trenches, is invaluable, and people respect that. And so you want to take a holistic approach to the way you manage your business. 
balance the legal, the marketing, the customer relations, the personnel management, and uh, they set a solid foundation for yourself from the very beginning. Um, so, you know, from the start, put all these things in place. And for those of you who are further on, help help some of these up and coming home remodelers do the same thing. I, I know they're going to be competing against you, but trust me, there's plenty of business out there. Uh, help everybody win. A rising tide raises all ships. You know, leverage your social media, maintain that website, um, actively pursue industry recognition. All of those things are going to accelerate your visibility and credibility. And then, of course, delegate the things that are not your core strengths. I had a uh, wise mentor several years ago make this statement to me, stop doing minimum wage activities. And essentially what he broke that down to me was figure out what your time is worth per hour. And if you were doing things that you could pay somebody substantially less to do, then go ahead and do it and get those off your plate. And put your energies towards the things that are going to drive your business forward and make you money. And you want to do the same thing. Delegate, focus on your core strengths, optimize your time and resources, understand your market, adapt to technological trends, use technology and systems to do some of the heavy lifting for you. These are all keys to staying ahead. Anyway, those are a few thoughts for you. How to navigate, how to strengthen your remodeling business in times of economic adversity, in times of technological shifts. And we are in the middle of one. You know, 25 years ago, the internet was radically changing life here in America. And today, artificial intelligence is doing the same thing. And so it's a changing environment. Be a student of that change. Don't be afraid of it. Figure out how to leverage it for your business. If we can help you uh, put these things into place, schedule a strategy session with us. And thanks for watching.